Hello, viewers. I am Dr. Bhupendra Prasad Sharma, a senior consultant surgeon and in charge of the barn unit of Nemcare Hospital, Guwahati, in the Indian state of Assam. I welcome you all to my YouTube channel, Barn Care. I've already presented a number of lectures on different aspects of barn injuries. And today I'm to, going to talk on first aid and management in emergency and OPD of the burn injured patients. I'm going to talk on first aid and management of burns in emergency and in the outpatient department. Now, as you all know, the first aid in burns is very, very important because if you give a proper first aid to the burn injured patients, then there is definitely a reduction or on the extent of burn injuries and also seriousness of the burn injuries. The first thing we must know how to extinguish fire if you see a person burning. If you see a person burning like this, you must ask him to stop, drop on the ground, and also roll on the ground. And most of the time, the fire extinguishes. If not, you must pour water to extinguish fire. The water has got all the advantages. Water is easily available, especially in the kitchen, for the majority of the, of the barn injuries occur. Water can be poured from a distance, so you do not run the risk of burning yourself. Water rapidly cools down the tissues and hence helps in the healing of the wound afterwards. But some people say, why not use a blanket to extinguish fire? Yes, blanket also extinguishes fire, but you must remember that blanket is not easily available, especially when nobody gives a blanket in the kitchen where majority of the bar accident occurs. Then one has to go close to the victim to wrap the blanket and thereby he runs the risk of burning himself. And also while wrapping the blanket, it interrupts the heat and it causes more burn because it has to run out of the oxygen to extinguish fire, which takes time and that is causes more damage. And hence we say that pour water to extinguish fire. Do not run for a blanket. Once the fire is extinguished, we must go on pouring water on the barn wounds till burning pain subsides. Generally, minimum 20 minutes of cooling is required. And also you must remember that you use only tepid water, not ice, or ice cold water, because they can cause more harm than good, because they cause constriction of blood vessels and reduction of blood to the barn wounds, which can cause delay in healing. Again, do not remove the barn cloths because they have already become sterile because of heat. Do not apply any ointment or any other material about the barn wound. This is also important, I will elaborate on it and remove the victims to the hospital as early as possible. Now, if you have got a small bond of the hands or slow, then you can put the hands under a running water under a cap, or you can immerse it under a bucket full of water, or you can put a wet cloth over it and then go to the hospital. This person who had a fire works injury over the bar, uh, over the hand, he came to the hospital immersing in a bucket full of water and we found his ex injury was much less than what was expected. So this is the result of pouring water on barns. Now do not use any other material like oil, butter, toothpaste, ghee, tamari, ink, potato, and so on and so forth, even grease and other things, because they do not cause any good. Even if you put ointment about a hot barn on, then it only interrupts the head and cause more damage. So you did not or should not apply all these things about the barn wounds. See, this small girl had a barn wound, which is smeared with ujala and indigo used for cleaning clothes. And it is causing more harm. Another patient was brought to our hospital by smearing asses all over our her barn wounds. We had a tough time in removing all those, and somehow we could 
reviver, but these are not to be used in barbells at all. Then the patient should be taken to the hospital if there is a barn in the SOCA, otherwise to the nearest hospital as early as possible. <clears throat> now, while transporting, serious barn injury patients should be transported to the nearest hospital. The essential that a team of trained personnel should accompany the barn patients, provided they are available. An intravenous infusion should be started immediately, if possible, while transportation. Keep the patient warm while transportation. Take care of the airway and breathing during transportation. And also you might give oxygen inhalation. Now, while the patient comes to the hospital, to the emergency department, what do we do? The first is airway management, breathing and circulation, as we do in all cases of trauma. In addition to that, we also see for disability, whether it is in a neuro neurological deficit or any other injury over the barn wounds, in addition to the barn wounds. And of course, we expose the barn wound and see the extent and depth of the wound. And also we do fluid resuscitation. So one by one, I'll go explaining. The area management or maintenance, patients with facial barns and edema should be checked for any area potency. If there is history of fall, one should also stabilize the cervical spine at the earliest because there will be injury to the spine as well. The breathing, check the breathing difficulty. He or she may require an oxygen inhalation, intubation, or a ventilation. Then see his circulation with breathing control. Look for the pulse and blood pressure. If they are stabilized also, we must start an intravenous line and start infusing Ringer lactate solution. <clears throat> then is disability. Look for any injury or neurological deficit, especially in elective parts, because they, most, most of the time they fall from a height because they work at a height. And of course, a stabilizer fracture with splints if they are any. Now coming to the E, that is exposure, expose the barn wound and assess the depth to the barn wound and keep the patient warm while exposing. This is very important as well. And of course, F is the fluid resuscitation. We should start intravenous linear electric solution as I have already said. And of course, we can give intravenous analgesics to relieve pain. Now, in addition to all this, we also should assess the inhalation for any inhalation injuries. Inhalation injury means heat or smoke damage to the airway. It is to be suspected when the barn accident occurs in closed or smoke total. If the patient is found in unconscious or semi conscious state, and the management is you should make the patient propped up position. You give oxygen, oxygen inhalation, there may be requirement of intubation or ventilation depending upon the type of inhalation injuries. Now, what are the quick tools that you should keep handy in emergency part? IV sets, intravenous fluid, regulated, analysis like trauma or diclofenac, laryngoscope, endotracheal tubes, area support, umbo bag, of course, oxygen cylinder or oxygen source, suction machine, and of course, it's chart showing the rule of nine. Now, once the patient is stabilized in the emergency department, now we, we have to decide whether a patient can be treated in outpatient or he or she requires admission to the hospital or further management. The indications of opioid treatment are Adult patients having less than 15% superficial burns, children having less than 10% superficial burns, and adult patients having less than 2% full thickness burns. Now, if you assess and find that there is superficial diabetal burn, that is second degree partial thickness burn, the clean, if there is a clean superficial diabetal burns reporting early to the hospital, it is, can be effectively treated with dry collagen seed. 
The burnt skin, along with the blisters, should be peeled off, cleaned, and the collagen sheet is applied directly without application of any antimicrobial acids. Dressing change is only required after a week. If the dressing gets soiled with ditchers, it will be changed earlier, but you need not change the collagen sheet. The advantage is there is less frequent dressing is required, and it means there's less pain to the patient. It means less expenses, and of course, it also leads to early healing of the bar. Now, if we find that it's a deep dermal barn, again, partial thickness barns, a small area of deep dermal barn can be covered with one of the ionized silver dressings. We use a quassal as it sits for that purpose. And if you use that, you can send the patient home. He or she will be called after four to five days. And if you find the aquasal is soaked, you can change it otherwise. If it is not soaked, you can keep for further period, up to 10 days. Mostly it is seen that the deep down barns or hills in 10 to 15 days time. Now, if there is full thickness barn, a small area of full thickness barn, which is less than 2% total body surface area, can be treated in OPD. And if, even if there is infection, we can treat them with nano crystal and silver dressing. We use Actico for that purpose. And we can send them home with antibiotic cover. They should be called again after three to four days, assessed and decided on the requirement of skin grafting. Sometimes we might require skin graft. Otherwise, we can continue with Actico dressing. There are instances of small area of full thickness barns healing with nanocrystal silver dressing in 15 to 20 days time. So you can definitely use it. Once you decide that a patient has to be treated in Indo, you must know what are the, who are the patients whom you want to keep in the hospital. That is what the admission criteria of a patient. Any barns about 15% total water cell there is an area in adult and any barn above 10% body surface area in children should be admitted. If there's a barn of the face, hands, and genitalia, there's a required admission. Any electrical barns of any extent required admission. Minor barns and extremes of access required admission. Barns with associated diseases or associated injuries required admission. So they are the patients who should be treated in a barns unit for further management. I will be talking on this in a later. Uh, presentation uh, for this. I thank you very much for your kind attention.